by the grace of God, the Almighty God, pay attention. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think of outside of Jesus Christ is evil. Say it again. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think of outside of Jesus Christ is evil. Everything you do in this world outside of Jesus Christ is evil. You know why? Because this world, the Holy Bible is telling us, not me, it is God himself. He said this world is placed not not Satan is just the ruler. No, this world is placed in the bosom of Satan, meaning Satan has encircled this world in his bosom. He's grabbed it. It's his. It's his. Now, don't be shocked and say, why is this happening in the world? Because the one who is actually ruling over this world is the evil one. What are you going to expect from the evil one? Nothing but evil. Please wake up. We have been deceived by the temptation of the world. We have been deceived by the lust of the world. We have been deceived by the rainbow colors, which rainbow was the sign of God, yet shame on such generation to abuse this rainbow. Shame on you. All these colors, holidays, clubbing, dancing, eating, drinking, fashion, Botox, drugs, alcohol, gambling, and floating around in this world, it is all evil, evil, evil. There is no such thing as I was having fun. We need to define what is fun. Don't be a fool, be wise. Do not just throw words left, right and center without thinking about what you're saying, without focusing on what you're saying, without weighing what you are about to say. You need to be wise. You need to be wise. Time is to do with the temporal life. Faith is to do with the eternal life. Before I continue, is it hot in the church? No? Must be me then. Right. All right. You see, in the midst of seriousness, it doesn't hurt to say, to be a little bit humorous. <laughs> there you go. Now, how can I elevate myself above the time? When I turn to the crucified Messiah, how can I elevate myself and be above the time when I turn to the crucified Jesus Christ of Nazareth? I'll give you this from the Holy Bible. The two thieves that were crucified on either side of the Lord Jesus. How come one of them was saved, the other was lost? What happened to this man who was saved by the Lord Jesus? What happened? Four things. You know, this guy was 100% going to hell. 100, no chance. He done everything wrong under the sun. He was a murderer, he was a thief, he was everything. Everything bad you could think of. And he's crucified now, he's nailed on the cross, meaning he can't go back and try to change his lifestyle. Too late, he's about to die. 
biologically, physically, he's about to die. The last seconds of his life are ticking away right before his very eyes while he is hanged on the cross. But four things saved this man. Four things made this murderer, this thief, this bad citizen to redeem the time for the days are evil. Four things. Number one, when he heard the Lord Jesus saying, Father, forgive them. Number two, fear of the Lord. Number three, confession of guilt. Number four, confession of the perfection of Christ. Number one, when he heard the Lord Jesus saying, Father, forgive them. Now, I'm sure the word would, would have gone around and this man would have heard there is this great teacher and preacher and great prophet and great man of God that has come and, and wiped the entire Israelite nation, you know, with his absolute, you know, powerful teaching and wondrous doings. So he's heard that he is claiming to be the son of God, meaning he's coming from above. So he would have wondered, who is his God? Who is his father? Where is his father? So when he heard the Lord on the cross saying, Father, forgive them. He looked in the crowd because normally when you call someone's name, you definitely look at them, don't you? you know? When you say, huh? <laughs> when you say, George, you look at George. You don't look at someone else. You look at George. So when he said, Father, this thief said, oh, perfect. I'm going to find out where is his dad. So he looked in the crowds. Nobody put their hand up. Nobody said, yes, son. He said, oh, he's definitely not here. So he turns to the Lord Jesus and sees him looking up to heaven and saying, Father. He said, whoa, looks like this man is the real deal. Looks like this man is, it is he who claims to be. He is the son of God and, and God is his dad. Because when he called daddy, he looked up in heaven. So daddy must be in heaven and the only one who art in heaven is God. So he is the son of God. I need to redeem the time because the days are evil and the only way I will redeem all the time I've lost in lust, in sin, in doing everything evil under the sun. The only way I will redeem this time is when I cling onto this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Looks like he has come from heaven and his dad is God who art in heaven. When he looked at Jesus saying, Daddy, straight away he believed. When he believed, what did we say faith is? Eternal life. Time, temporal life. When he believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, what happened? When you have faith in the Lord, something will enter your life called fear of the Lord. He had the fear of the Lord. How do we know he had the fear of the Lord? By turning to his friend. Because the other guy was actually telling Jesus off. The other person was ridiculing the Lord Jesus. They are friends for God knows how many years. So this man who believed in the Lord had the fear of the Lord. He turned to his friend. He said, don't you fear God? Have you no fear of God? Excuse me. Look who's talking. <laughs> the one who killed people is talking about fearing God. Where were you, my dear friend, when you slashed someone's throat? Didn't you have the fear of the Lord then? No. 
where were you when you stole things, when you destroyed things? You're talking about fearing God? He says, yes, because I believe Jesus Christ is the only way.